All right, y'all, this is take two. I did this before and I didn't even have my voice on. But anyways, it's all right. I thought it was so important to talk about this Form 1099-DA. And I spoke about this uh, at least a year ago, probably a year and a half ago. And uh, there was a lot of rhetoric, commentary on the internet, Google and Yahoo and all these places. And I keep telling you, stop reading that nonsense. Stop listening to the people in the chat forums and the crypto investing groups. They're all laymen. They don't understand the stuff. Even lawyers don't even understand the stuff. Who's reading the Federal Register? The Federal Register is where agencies propose changes, rulemaking changes, especially when they adopt a new form, right? In this case, the Form 1099-DA. And I said a year, year and a half ago that it's coming. And so what? It's just, a, it's just another form to report the same information that's already being reported. They're just using a different form. So what? Look. This is on what you're seeing here on the screen. Proposed collection of information, digital asset proceeds from broker transactions. Let's just assume everybody's a broker. Okay, every third party, let's just assume everybody's a broker. That makes it easy to understand, right? And, and see what's going on here? They have a little statement regarding the Paperwork Reduction Act of whatever and the Privacy Act, when the, when the government agency, okay, the IRS accepts, promulgates a new form, it has to be approved by the Office of Management and Budget and a, a number is assigned. And typically when it deals with income, the number begins with 1545, it just is. Like a 1040, I think it's like 1545-5115 possibly. This one is going to be 1545 something and we don't know yet. There's still, the, the IRS is still accepting comments until June 21st, okay? Now, this is the first time I went to the Federal Register. I went to the Federal, last year I did this last year and I went and there was no such discussion on the 1099 DA. Now there is. And I predicted this. I said, there probably will be. And so what? And here we are now there is. And I'm saying again, so what? It doesn't create any new tax consequences, okay? It's just reporting. I told you before many, many times. If you don't give the IRS or the United States a duty to reconcile accounting records, then it won't. It doesn't care. Receiving a 1099 that's paid out to, let's say, a pass-through doesn't create a duty to reconcile. It, it's different if the, per, the person who's getting this 1099, whatever 1099, doesn't matter, has filed tax returns previously. Then it creates a presumption that more returns are filed, okay? That's where you have problems. But if you're using a pass-through, so what? Anyways... Look, see what they're doing here. Okay, you guys can make comments until June 21st. Here's where you do it. Very, very simple. Okay. Now, this is the title of the proposed rulemaking discussion, right? Digital asset proceeds from broker transactions. Look, they haven't even signed a number yet. <laughs> it's not even approved. The government can only collect information on an approved form because of 26 USC 6103. Remember I told you before, I was showing you how 6103 precludes Financial Crimes Network from collecting your beneficial owner information from new LLCs. Remember that? And remember they got their butts kicked in March? Okay, different subject, but I'm just saying that's how all this stuff plays in together. All right, so look, this is a new collection, meaning a new form. Okay, that's how they talk. A new collection, it's new. Uh, it, it applies to, let's say everybody, all right? I like to keep things simple. What is this? Only 5,000 people, let's see. Only 5,000 people are looking at this. How many people are affected by this? 300 million? 5,000 people are watching it? Okay. So you see, this is where it all comes from. You go to the agency that's proposing a regulation, see how it affects you if it does. This is where you find out in the federal register. This is what was what uh, administrative agencies do, okay? This is under the um, Administrative Procedures Act, all right? As you know, the Administrative Procedures Act, Section 552A, Title V, USC, Section 552A, is the bankruptcy reorganization plan for the United States government. And from that reorganization plan, you get things like this, the Federal Register. It's where rulemaking is published and debated, all right? It was that way from the 30s, I believe, uh, it wasn't on the internet. It was all paper way back in the day. It just recently was on the internet, I think in the last 14 years or so. 
So look, uh, there happens to be something, here's some discussion. It looks like an IRS official publication and that's saying, don't file the 1099-DA. This is not for people filing, okay? This is for reporting companies that are reporting on people they're paying. Remember, the dollars, the disposition of assets, the disposition of property, the gain is taxable. Let's go back to the um, the uh, Federal Register reporting, okay? Here's what it's for. I'm going to read this to you. This form, 1099-DA, is used by brokers. A broker is a licensed professional or business. You got to find out if you're dealing with brokers. Ask them, do you have a broker's license? That's how you know. To report proceeds from, in some cases, the basis for digital asset dispositions. That means the sale. That means a third party. There's somebody else that you traded the property, the coins, for dollars. The dollars are taxable. Okay, not the coins. Taxpayers may be required to recognize gain from these dispositions of digital assets. Yes, they are not. Maybe they they are. If they're gains and if they're not deferred. Okay, you have control over this. It's very simple. All right, so reporting is also required when brokers know or have reason to know that a corporation in which a taxpayer owns digital assets that is also stock has had a reportable, what is a reportable? It's qualifying a change in control or capital structure. Some are reportable, some are not. You gotta read this stuff, okay? This paragraph right here, the abstract, that's all you should be reading. Stop reading the commentary on the internet. Some of you can read it because you can you can think critically. The rest of you, stop reading it, okay? And stop asking me to comment on it. Think for yourself, okay? I'm going to go off what the agency is saying. Why? Because the agency thinks it's telling me what to do. So I'm going to find out what the agency intends on doing. I don't care what commentary is on the website. I don't care what some lawyer's website says because all they're trying to do is scare you into hiring them. They don't have any marketing skills. Taxpayers may be required to recognize gain from the receipt of cash, services, digital assets. Okay, that's just property. There's nothing new there or other property. Are you reading this? That was exchanged for a digital asset. I've explained this many times before, okay? Like so forth and so on, right? That's all you need to be reading. This is what's important. Not the commentary around the internet. If you want to make yourself crazy and lose sleep at night, okay, rely on the commentary and make yourself crazy and ask all kinds of questions. Don't ask me. I'm not going to comment on it. You guys got to think for yourself. What I've been saying for decades has not changed. And I can tell you this, in over 30 years of doing this work, so many things have happened with the tax system. I've been doing the same exact work in the same exact way. Maybe it's a little more sophisticated the way I explain it and the strategies I use, okay? Because I am able to solve more problems over the years as they come my way. But I can tell you this, not a one thing has changed in the way I've been telling people to use a limited liability company and change their property rights since 1994. In spite of all the news and changes that you perceive that may have happened, there's not been anything that required me to change what I'm doing to protect property rights, income, avoid legally avoid tax consequences for anybody. What does that tell you? Okay, there was only some major revisions to the tax code over the years. 1931, I believe, 1954, 1987, and 2001, okay? Those are revisions, and I'm not even sure what they revised. I don't, I don't think it really matters too much. But when there's a major revision of the tax code, it's made public. There isn't, There hasn't been one. There's been no change with crypto reporting. The only thing the IRS did, and thankfully, is define virtual currency as property, which protects us. It actually protects us, if you understand what's going on here. And so the definition of cryptocurrency or virtual currency as property brings in 100 years of case law that's very favorable to people that want to use cryptocurrency and invest with it or speculate in it, whatever you guys want to do, okay? Stop running all around like a Chicken Little, all right? I hope that helps you. Hope you enjoy your weekend. Thanks for watching.